Over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at different spiritual styles and the way in which they influence our walk with God. Today, we're going to think a little bit more about how these spiritual styles might impact our prayer life and how we can learn from one another in this aspect of our spiritual walk. Recently, I read an article by a minister who had just come back from a Christian conference. He recounted how when the delegates met early in the morning to begin their day with prayer, they realised that they each prayed in very different ways. Instead of arguing over the right way to pray, the team learned from one another and engaged in one another's prayer practices. They wanted to share this experience, so they began each session of the conference by praying in one of the ways they had shared previously. One person led the gathered community in a worship song that she learned as a child. Another had the delegates write prayers on pieces of paper and read them to one another. And a third person prayed in colour as she reflected on beautiful works of art. How each one of us prays is intimately linked to the spiritual styles through which we live out the life of faith. Prayer is more than simply talking with God. It's a spiritual communion with God, a spirit-to-spirit connection with the divine. And the ways in which we commune with God are related to our spiritual styles. Today we'll consider word-centred prayer and emotion-centred prayer. Then next time we'll think more about symbol and action-centred prayer. So, first of all, word-centred prayer. For Christians with a preference for a word-centred approach to spirituality, prayer is, not surprisingly, based on words. This style values concreteness, so prayers often involve concrete discussions with God. Prayers may be spoken or written, said aloud or silently, alone or in community. But for the most part, people who prefer this style of spirituality pray with words. They commune with God through language. Since the precision and accuracy of words matters to these people, some people might prefer praying with pre-written prayers, or perhaps they may read Bible passages, creeds or the words of hymns, so that they can pay attention to the God whom they are talking with, rather than formulating the right words. And even if this isn't our preferred style of prayer, it's easy to see how having prayers and creeds which are already written down can help us focus on God rather than worrying about trying to find the right words to pray. The second style of prayer we'll explore today is emotion-centred prayer. People who practice emotion-centred spirituality put their whole being into their prayer life. Like their word-centred brothers and sisters, they perceive God in concrete terms, so they may also pray through words and language as if they were talking to a good friend. But they tend to care less about the precision of the words they are using. For emotion-centred Christians, Prayer involves opening up with God, being completely honest with God and speaking to God with passion, zeal and fervour. They cry out to God with tears of joy and tears of sorrow. They seek to lose themselves in prayer and may put their bodies into their prayers by kneeling, falling prostrate or raising their hands to God. In the Psalms, we read of David often praying in this way. Of course, differing spiritual styles are not the only variable in determining a diversity of prayer practices. For example, prayer traditions that characterise different Christian denominations, particularly the preferences in different congregations and in families, often affect the way people commune with God but an individual's predominant spiritual style will be one factor that shapes a preferred way of praying. 
In our discussion, we'll have the chance to chat about our own experiences, what we have learnt about praying over the years, and to encourage one another with our stories of answered prayer.